you so much, sir. I'll be speaking on the ideal graft fixation. So now we've learned, we've come all the way from uh, choosing the graft, uh, the anatomy and the drillings. So what is the primary goal when we look at ACL reconstruction? See, the functional and the anatomical restoration of an ACL in a symptomatic ACL deficient knee. So that's our primary concern. So the most important factors that are in our hands is the graft selection, the graft positioning, the drilling, and the graft fixation, and of course, the rehabilitation. So I'll be focusing on the graft fixation now, now the methods and the ways we can fix the graft to the uh, patient. The graft healing takes, uh, there are various ways how the graft healing, and it's a process when we are using a soft tissue graft, uh, like the hamstring grafts, they take about 12 weeks you, uh, but with the help of Sharpie fibers. When you are using a bone to bone, like a BTB graft, it, it is uh, quicker and it's six weeks only bone to bone. The allografts uh, take much longer. Until that time, the fixation device should secure the graft uh, well enough. So when we talk about an ideal graft fixation, it should be strong, strong enough to avoid failures, stiff enough to restore the stability, to give you the stability when you're doing all the movement and activities, and also secure to prevent the slippage of the graft. So that has to be anatomical, biocompatible, safe, reproducible, MRI compatible, and of course, allow easy re revision. Mainly when we talk about fixation uh, methods, they are either aperture fixation or the suspensory fixations. The aperture has the interference screws. The suspensory could be cortical uh, fixation or the cancellous uh, uh, suspensory fixations. Interference is defined as the amount by which the diameter of the screw exceeds the, uh, between the graft and the tunnel. And this is definitely considered the gold standard for fixation. It minimizes the uh, tunnel movement. There's less uh, femoral widening and the creep is also less. But there are a lot of factors which affect uh, when we are looking at an interferential uh, screw fixation. The length, the size geometry, the divergence, the torque, the bone quality and also the screw material. The length has to be, uh, when you take the length, that has to be uh, uh, very uh, precisely uh, taken care that you don't uh, going beyond the uh, articular surface or you not exceed the length. The more the length we get, it's we have to be uh, try and maximize the length of the screw that we can take. So there's a better hold and the better purchase. For BTB, you just have to uh, take the plug. So you size it accordingly. The size should be ideally one centimeter, one mm uh, more than the tunnel diameter. Although if you're too much on the cancellous, like in an AM graft on the tibial side, you could even go two up. But when you're doing a BTB, a bone to, uh, oh, you just have to be the same size of the diameter. The diameter, the geometry, also the, the threads of the screw is very important, especially when the, using a metal screw. The metal screws use, usually have a tendency to even cut the graft. So soft screws or the bio screws really come handy and these, the, the, uh, the threads have to be uh, softer. The insertional torque, so the, when you're fixing it, the more the resistance, you are more confident on how the secure the, uh, the fixation is. Of course, there's more uh, torque with the, uh, uh, with the metal screws, lesser with the bio screws. The tunnel dilatation, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a, a good method where you don't ream the complete thing, but uh, the complete diameter as the desired, but you then dilate. So you're not removing the bone, you're just compacting the bone. So the bone stock is not affected. It's really helpful in revision cases when you don't want to uh, remove too much bone in an already, uh, where the bone is already deficient in that area. There could be a divergence of about less than for 10 to 15 degrees, which helps in getting a better grip, but too much of divergence when you're putting the screw and how you've drilled, that uh, causes the loss of the uh, hold and you don't get an adequate hold onto the screw. Of course, the bone density uh, makes a very important role, especially when you're looking at a, a slightly older patient or a revision cases or patients who haven't, uh, uh, you know, the bone stock is not too good. The material also have a very important role starting with PLLA. There's a constant uh, uh, update on how the materials are changing and how we are uh, now in a better position where we are, uh, we, if we have the uh, uh, screws getting absorbed lately and delayed and delayed, like how you have peak now, which takes, which doesn't even dissolve and we have biocomposite, which takes few years maybe to uh, get absorbed. So the fixation does not get affected. 
there is no need for removal uh, with these, uh, with the bio screws and with the interferential screws. They do not interfere with the MRI if you're using a bio material and the revision is much easier. But of course, the screws can break. There have been instances when the bio composite screws uh, do tend to break. The calcium appetite also goes, uh, they break. There are specific screwdrivers for each company. So this, it's not like a universal uh, screwdriver for all these screws. So you have to be specific. If you are in case planning to remove it, you have to be sure which company screw has gone in and that screwdriver is available. The tunnel widening is there. There could be tissue, probable tissue reaction and also fixation could be lost before the uh, complete take up of the graft has happened. Coming to the suspensory fixation, this uh, fixation which is uh, most uh, commonly widely used for various factors, um, uh, like for the main factor that is the ease and uh, ease of doing. So the cortical fixation, uh, you would, could have a fixed loop or a variable loop. Fixed loop is uh, when we drill the entire uh, femoral tunnel, we take the entire length and then we uh, take the desired amount of the uh, graft which goes into the bone. We add 10 mm more for the button to flip and, uh, and then we pull the graft. Definitely much, much more uh, secure uh, and there is less, there have been various studies and uh, theoretically and the studies say there is 0.2 mm uh, more uh, uh, stable, um, less chances of elongation uh, with a fixed loop. But again, there is uh, uh, endo button like how it was synonymous with the uh, fixed loop. It is, uh, 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 you have to rim out more. Uh, coming to the variable loop, variable loop makes it more simpler. There is less bone that is removed. Uh, uh, there is this is a second generation of uh, the uh, the uh, cortical suspensory fixation, and there is more uh, graft that goes into the tunnel. So if you have like a 35 mm uh, total uh, length of the femur, you could easily go up to 25 uh, uh, mm of the graft goes in. Whereas in a fixed loop, you just go in with a 15 mm. Adequate enough, but still you have more. Uh, tendon to bone here. You can also have additional uh, add-ons which you can add to the uh, graft fixation but definitely not the primary. So in case you're not too happy, in case you're going in for a revision case, you want more stability, you cannot take chances, you could add these uh, 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 washers or the staples which add to the fixation of the uh, grab, uh, graft but uh, definitely not the uh, primary uh, fixation. Coming to the cancellous suspensory fixation, uh, transfix which was, uh, which is now slightly primitive because it earlier it was used and was used for a lot of years but again the main drawback it's trans uh, tibial and not transportal so you, you know anatomical, how anatomical it is is questionable although you always had a very uh, strong uh, graft and a very strong hold used for years but now it's uh, really obsolete so if you're starting out I'm sure uh, suspensory uh, cortical fixation is uh, uh, is much more uh, simpler, easier and more anatomical when you're doing transportal. So aperture fixation definitely theoretically much better. The uh, interference screw is uh, considered uh, gold standard especially if you're using a bone to uh, tendon graft uh, they have the best hold. Uh, suspensory fixation less complication uh, much easier for the surgeon to use. Uh, hybrid is what we most commonly use world over these days uh, which is a suspensory on the femur side and an interferential or a, uh, on the uh, aperture fixation on the tibial side. Early post-op period uh, fixation is the weakest link so that's what you have to take care and you know you can actually uh, depending on how the fixation or how solid your fixation is you can uh, guide your rehab accordingly and clinical results of various are still really comparable. Thank you.